In developing countries like Bolivia, many children die before the age of five because bacterial diseases spread through human waste contaminate water sources. And we've heard that some communities don't even name their children until they're one years old just because so many kids die. To help lower mortality rates, the professional chapter of Engineers Without Borders in eastern Oklahoma got together with its student chapter at the University of Tulsa. Together, they designed and built a prototype of an environmentally friendly way to kill bacteria in human waste. They call it the eco-latrine. It turns what had been a biohazard into clean compost, safe for crops. There's going to be a part up top where they actually go to the bathroom, and then beneath is where you're going to have to get out the compost. Turning human feces into compost is really pretty simple. We mix uh, ash with it or green leafy materials like potato tops or leaves from trees, just whatever is green out there, and mix it with the manure. And over a course of a year, it'll compost. And it all happens in the bottom compartment of the eco-latrine. I like this uh, method of composting because you don't need electricity. You don't need anything fancy. It's just uh, organic matter being mixed in with manure. On this prototype the students are building, you'll notice a couple of buckets are sticking up out of the top. Well, they're not going to have buckets when they go to Bolivia. Those are where the toilets will go. The way this works is it does have two sides. One side will be used for the first year to collect the waste. The other side will be used the second year once the composting is busy happening on the other. This photo shows what an eco-latrine looks like when it's finished. It's not very big, but it will serve a family of six to eight people. Building one costs about $800. Earlier this year, student and professional engineers had an opportunity to go to Bolivia to explain to villagers how the latrines could benefit them. Then we told them what we wanted to do and we got their feedback and their input on what they thought that we were going to do and how we'd both work together to fix the problem. In November, Engineers Without Borders wants to go back to begin building the eco-latrines. But they can only do that if they're able to raise about $30,000 by mid-October to help cover the cost of the trip and materials. In Tulsa, I'm Kathy Tatum, the Oklahoma News Report.